Hello, listeners, and welcome to another Devil's Reign crossover episode of Tomes of Evil. I am your host, Russell, and I'm riding solo today. Um, we're going to talk about Devil's Reign Villains for Hire number two. And then you will get um, a Justin-only episode of Devil's Reign X-Men number two. So um, we're doing things a little differently. Um, anyway. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to talk about Villains for Hire number two. This is written by Clay McLeod Chapman. It's penciled by Manuel Garcia, inks by Lorenzo Ruggiero, um, colors by Proto Bunkers Dono Sanchez Almara and Fer Sifuentes Sujo, and letters by VCs Joe Sabino, cover by Scan. Um, so. This issue picks up pretty much directly where uh, Villains for Hire number one left off with um, John Walker, the U.S. agent, um, confronting the Thunderbolts and Wilson Fisk, um, basically wanting to enlist in in the Thunderbolts. Um, he's met with contempt both from the Thunderbolts and Fisk, but, um, he lays it on pretty good. You know, he tells Kingpin that, you know, he's kind of order, law and order, and to keep up appearances, the Thunderbolts need a little bit of law and order, because they're kind of a lawless bunch of chaos, chaos agents at this point. So... Wilson, being the uh, strategic businessman that he is, uh, he uh, he takes uh, John Walker up on his offer. Um, he leads them into um, uh, there's a bank heist happening, and the Thunderbolts attack and disposing of these poor robbers just as you know, brutally as they did their foes in the first issue, but Electro catches the uh, glint of a diamond, and she's going to steal it, but uh, that ain't happening on John Walker's watch. He, he throws his shield right into her back, don't know how it didn't break her spine, and... Um, Basically, the Thunderbolts are like, uh, "What are you doing? We're, we're, uh, you're not going to stop us from doing what we want to do." And uh, John Walker's like, "The yeah, I am," and he proceeds to single-handedly take down the Thunderbolts one by one. It's pretty impressive. Um, Agony tries to get in Walker's head a little bit. There's almost kind of a flirtation aspect but it with, with it being agony it's <laughs> probably just you know looking for uh, some dirt so she can uh, have a reason to kill him <laughs> um, but this is when the big reveal happens uh, John Walker is a mole um, I don't think it's specified quite who has uh, Oh, it says the FBI. Um, so I guess he's been tasked with infiltrating the Thunderbolts by the FBI. And, which this makes sense, because, like, when uh, we saw that U.S. agent was going to be a Thunderbolt, I was kind of confused, because, yeah, U.S. agent is very questionable, um... But I wouldn't necessarily call him a villain, at least not at this point in his uh, career. Um, but it all makes sense now because um, he's faking it. 
He is undercover. Um, the Thunderbolts uh, attend this uh, uh, rally that Fisk is having when it is attacked by... I don't know if we get a name to this villain. I thought originally it was the Purple Man. Maybe it's one of the Purple Children. Um, they have the power to infect um, people with, by touching them. And they kind of go into a rage or mind controlled. And the Thunderbolts spring into action, but Walker refuses to let them, you know, kill anybody because they are, uh, they're not in control of themselves. And Electro jumps in, but she gets overwhelmed and she gets turned. Um. Rhino runs her over, basically, and if she's, it seems that she's killed. And that's how the issue ends. This big cliff, cliffhanger is Electro dead. Um, so, uh, overall, um, I, I like this issue. I don't think I like it as much as the first one, because the first one was just balls to the wall, crazy violence, um, crazy over the top violence, which is the best kind of violence, is when it's not so realistic that it makes you gag, it's more just kind of like Mortal Kombat, stupid, goofy fun. Um, I like the idea of U.S. Agent being a, uh, a mole, kind of an infiltrator. Um, I was disappointed that Electro might be dead. I mean, she might be alright. This is comics after all, but I really like this Electro, and uh, if they were going to kill somebody, it should have been Whiplash. He's cool, but he doesn't really do much. Um, I liked it at one point that... Uh, <laughs> what is it? They referred to John Walker as <laughs> Captain Conservative. That got a good chuckle out of me. Um, the art's pretty good. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, some of the faces are like hyper detailed, but they're still very stylized. Um, I think especially Agony looks good. Looks real cool. Agony's probably my the standout of these Thunderbolts, in my opinion. Um, I thought U.S. Agent took down the Thunderbolts a little too easily. Um, I know he's like, you know, he's essentially Captain America 2.0, but come on now. Um, overall, I, I think I will give this a 3 out of 5. Um... Pretty good stuff. Um, I'm anxious to see how this little mini series is resolved um, with Devil's Reign Villains for Hire number three, and especially how this Thunderbolts team is going to wrap up, knowing that we have a brand new team of Thunderbolts uh, debuting in the future. Uh, so that's going to do it for us. Um, please, uh, if you want to check out the other podcast involved in this Devil's Reign crossover, uh, check out the Capes and Lunatics podcast. They have a show all about Daredevil called The Devil You Know. Uh, check out Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. And To Know Her Is To Fear Her, the Spider Woman podcast. You will, uh, you will next hear, I assume, uh, Devil's Reign X-Men number two with my goblin compatriot Justin the Owl Osgood. Um, so stay tuned for that. And uh, I'm going to hop on my goblin glider and I'm going to fly out of here. So have a good night, everybody.